Hello darlings, my name is Mebo and welcome back to Mebo's GIMP tutorial. Now this is post commentary, so I've had to record the video first and then do this over, so I have no idea what I did earlier, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to, to explain this. So what we have here is, uh, this is the monkey we were working on last time, and right now I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in I, so, to get a better um, vantage point to do the neck. So start with the neck, one point there, one point there. Now, as I said before, the, the smoothest point is what I tend to do with, um, if I want a sharper point, where's a thicker point, where's a, where's a thicker line, I'll want towards, uh, like, towards the head or something more substantial, like a connection. So now we're going to go ahead and do the vest, pull it down a little bit, and you'll see that, um, I do tend to work a little bit faster if I'm not commentating at the same time, but it still does take time. This is actually one of the more detailed pictures that I've been doing lately. And after this, I should have two more to do, and then, then that would complete the illustrations for the wonderful Wizard of Oz. Now, as I said before, this basically is for Nick from Rational Gamers, and all the links will be in the description box below for him. He's an awesome YouTuber. Go check him out. He does awesome stuff. I love his rapid rundowns. And, um, he was curious as to how I did this. Now, as you can see, I'm still doing the selection tool with using the paintbrush because the paint bucket does not always get everything like it's supposed to. So the paintbrush does a lot better. And you can get some really unique lines that way. And um, now I'm going to start working on the shoulder. Uh, if you see it glitching out a little bit, that's just because uh, my computer's processor is not powerful enough to try to run two things at once, especially with the 1280 by 720 screen resolution, so there's that. But, um, so I'm working on the shoulder here. As you notice, I only use three main anchor points and then very few in between because the more anchor points you have between the two main ones, it can get a little convoluted, it can be a little uh, busy, it can not work as properly. It's, you want smooth lines, not sharp lines. I mean, unless you're making a box or something, you'll want sharp lines or, or some kind of skyscraper or city or window, you'll want sharp lines. But for something organic like this, you want as smooth lines as possible. And um, as you can see, I don't always follow my sketch because sometimes when I'm, when I'm inking it, when I'm pen tooling it or path tooling it, I tend to want to do things a little differently. I tend to want to add maybe a little more substance or a little less substance to the, to the pieces, to the sections. Which is fine because it's a sketch, you know, you're just you're just following along with the sketch, it's just a baseline. So now we're adding some fur. You see all these different anchor points. I'm trying to do um, as much as I can in one shot to show you. And you don't always have to do like little bits and pieces here if you know how to use your anchor points. And um, again, once you go to the edit option, you can go back to design and add in another section of, uh, of lines without having them to connect. So it makes it really, really useful. And again, it's all practice. It takes a lot of practice to get this done. I should know. I, I mean, I'm still learning things with this. So, um, now with the selection tool, and now it's glitching out again. I'm leaving the glitches in. It's just more entertaining that way. And I really don't know how to take them out anyway. So it's okay. I'm still learning. I'm still learning how to, to, to do video editing and audio editing and, and all this stuff, you know? I mean, it's really interesting because I started out with OBS, and then when I received uh, the Valley of Ash demo, uh, OBS would not record it for whatever reason, it just would not record it no matter what I did. So that's when I found about a, a Microsoft Expression Encoder, which is what I currently use now. It recorded the Valley of Ash, no problem whatsoever, so I've been using that from now on. I tend to use it a lot more, and I, I don't even use OBS anymore. If I ever want to stream, I'll use OBS, but my computer doesn't have enough processing power to actually stream, in, even in an SNES game. So until then... Uh, maybe I'll fiddle again with OBS for streaming purposes, but until then, probably not. I'll just stick with uh, Encoder. It is my favorite software. It's actually Microsoft Expression Encoder Screen Capture. If you get the uh, Microsoft Expression Encoder 4 Pro SP2 pack, it comes with Encoder included. I mean, the screen capture included, so you don't have to go and download it separately. But, um, yeah, so now we're working on the, I guess, the back of the, I said, the tricep. I think that's the tricep, the biceps in the front, so I think it's the tricep of the monkey. Um, I, like I said in the last few videos, I went with like three or four different iterations before I got this one, and then I decided on the chimpanzee style, because it seems that the flying monkey to me, and a subordinate of the king monkey, would be more of a chimpanzee, whereas the king of the flying monkeys would be more of like a, a gorilla type guy. And, yeah, so I decided to go with this. Oh my god, 
stuff is falling. Oh my gosh. Oh, my kittens. <laughs> they knock the stuff forward, but you know, he love them. I love them. They're my babies. So again, we're doing a selection tool, and we're doing a paintbrush. Always a hard paintbrush. I never use a soft one. I don't like the soft one unless I'm doing it for skin or skin tones. And primarily, that's, that's what I'll use it for. But, um... Post comments here. I have no idea what I'm doing here. Right, we're going on the forearm now. And there's a bit of fur there. And as I said before, the more you practice with the path tool, the more you practice, the better you'll get. You'll find that there are some really interesting things you can do with it. You can make all sorts of shapes and curves and lines. As you see that one fold line on the vest, that was actually done using the handles of the anchor points. They're very, very useful. But for me, I just do the straightforward basics. And here we're doing the elbow. As you can see, I'm editing it a little bit with the design by moving the anchor points around. And again, I'm just a novice at this. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just doing what I've learned on my own. So that's how this is. And I'm very sorry for the person who voted no on the Twitter poll. I made a Twitter poll asking if you wanted to see me finish path tooling the monkey or go straight to color. It was a three to one vote to actually see me finish path tooling it. So the one person who voted for the color, I'm very, very sorry, you're gonna have to wait. Uh, probably not this part, this is part three, part four will probably be more path tooling. I'm hoping maybe part five will be color, but seeing as there's wings involved here, it could be a little bit longer. I know everyone's anxious to see the wings of the monkey. That's, that's a real pain in the butt for me. Um, but I choose to do these things, you know. I choose to make detailed uh, sketches because I really like how they come out. I like the way the crisp lines come out. And like I said in the first part, if you're someone like me who has unsteady hands, then trying to make a smooth line with the, with the Wacom tablet is not going to happen. It's just not going to happen no matter how hard you try. It's, it won't work. That's all there is to it. It just, it just won't work. So, you know, that's, that's a big problem. But, um, so I'm really happy about this. Again, this is like, uh, this is, a uh, post-commentary, so I still don't know what I'm doing. Fur. I'm doing fur. We're doing more fur. I think after this fur, we're gonna work on the bicep of the chimpanzee flying monkey. Um, I lost my train of thought. I'm so sorry. This is kind of embarrassing. It's alright. Should be 32 minutes of this. Uh, yeah, the person who voted no, I'm sorry, again, I'm hoping part 6 will be color, but judging by how this is going, probably not. Um, part, part 4 might actually be just like one wing, and then part 5 will probably be another wing, or I just might skip it, I'm, I'm not really sure, so if you're curious, if you want to see me finish the wings, then go ahead and leave a comment below. I mean, if you're interested in it, if not, I'll probably just make another Twitter poll for those of you who follow me on Twitter. And if the poll comes out the same, I'll finish it off. But I'll, I'll just record and, pen, and path tool it anyway while I'm recording because um, as Nick and a guy and a girl game have said before, it's interesting to see the process. And I know that not a lot of people, not a lot of artists like to show their own process. They just show like, oh, here's a sketch. Oh, here's some flat colors. Oh, here's some shading. And I'm not that type of person. I, I like to share what I learned. That's why this, this tutorial is important to me. And that's why when Nick said that he was interested in it, that's why I went ahead and went for it. Because I love to share what I learned with others. And like a couple others on Twitter have said, the path tool is not something they're familiar with. They don't really know how to use it. And I didn't know how to use it either. It's just trial and error for me. So once I learned out how to use it and how, how it works, I want to share that with all of you. So for those of you who can't, Make smooth lines with the Wacom tablet. Use the path tool. That's what this tutorial is for. It's so that you can learn. And I really want to see what you come up with. I want to see what all of you darlings come up with. Because it interests me. I want to see how you learn to use the path tool. I want to see how you use it yourself. Because everyone's different. Like, this is how I use it. But someone else might use, maybe instead of three main anchor points, they might use five, six, or seven anchor points. I don't know. And I would love to see it. It's interesting to me. There is cat for flight all over place in here. I'm so sorry about that. Okay, so now that we've done the bicep, it it looks fine. I like it. And we did the elbow and we did the tricep. With little bits of fur here and there to show that he is that he does have fur. That's why it's there. Um, and before I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but I do like crisp black lines for this. 
because it's illustration, and to me, an illustration should have crisp black lines. It's just, uh, it's just like an outline. It's just what I prefer. Um, so right now, I'm waiting on the pen tool, the path tool, to go back to the design. There we go. So we can finish off the forearm on both sides. Now, I'm pretty sure in this tutorial, we're gonna try to finish off the body, the rest of the tail, and maybe get a basic outline of some of the wings. So, and maybe the ears and stuff, because I really want to get that done. Uh, oh, that's right, I have to do his hair. His curry Q hair, that's going to be fun. Uh, I'm a real, uh, real stickler for coloring hair and eyes. I really love those things, so that's why he's got curly Q hair on top. Um, and yeah, this is for, uh, this is for illustration purposes for the Wonderful Wizard of Oz ebook that I'm working on for children. And after that, the narrated version of this will be on my second channel called Cast Cradle. So if you're interested in listening to that, that, that will be on that channel. Uh, it's going to take me a while to get it up and running, as I will have the narrated version also up on ACX and Audible. So, and those can have their own websites. Um, it's, it's my first introduction into narration, and in order to do that, in order to, to narrate children's books for ACX, I have to illustrate and format the public domain version of the wonderful Wizard of Oz, which is where these illustrations are coming from. This is where it's stemming from. So uh, this is actually like my first try at this. That's why I'm illustrating and uh, a couple people have told me that they look much better than the art I've done in the past, which is all but lost now. But they were not this good. Like I said, it's a learning process. You have to learn and grow with your own uh, style. I mean, it's, it's, all, it's all it is. It's a learning process. You learn, you live and you learn. You make mistakes, you learn some more. And that one side of the forearm is probably too skinny to match the other one. I may or may not change it. I don't remember if I changed it. I think I do change it. Um, but, oh, here I'm going to go in with the lasso tool. Like I said, I always use the lasso tool. I never use the erase tool. Always the lasso tool to make those crisp erase delete lines to get out the lines on the inside. That's why you don't have to worry too much if you make a mistake somewhere. You can always go back in, delete it, and redo it. It's not. It's not the end of the world, don't worry about it, it's not a big deal, you can always fix your mistakes. So don't don't freak out if you mess up on your drawing, don't freak out, just calm down, take a breath, and, and that's how you'll be able to do it. Yeah, that forearm does look real skinny. I'll go back and fix it. Oh, and I haven't been doing it very often in this video, but please do save your work often. You never know when something bad is going to happen. You don't know if the program's going to crash, you don't know if the power will go out, you don't know if your battery's going to dislodge itself, you you just don't know. So always save your work often, I will try to remember, remind myself in the future to save often. I typically save often when I'm doing things, but for, for this purpose, I was just really focused on wanting to try to show off the pen tool aspect of all this. Just adjust some stuff here. There we go. Um, and I do apologize if you hear any background noise, that's actually just my fan running in the background, a ceiling fan that runs 24-7. So here we go, I'm trying to fix the forearm again. As you see, I do use the move option sometimes, but very rarely. And remember, if you want to make a selection, be sure you click make a selection from path before you hit the paintbrush because I'm not sure if it's already passed or not but there's an instance where I made some anchor points and then I didn't hit that button I hit the paintbrush button and it disappeared you get one chance you get one chance for those anchor points and you can't get it back that's probably the downfall of that tool but it's okay it's still a good tool if you make a mistake and it, it disappears then that's all right because you know what you can always go back and it'll probably be better it'll probably be a lot better What's going on here? Ah, yes. Waiting, waiting for the path tool to come back to life again. And if you do have any questions about the program I used to for screen for screen recording, the Microsoft Expression Encoder Screen Capture, do don't be afraid to ask me on Twitter or the comments below because I will answer you. I do try to answer all the comments that I get. I mean, I don't get that many, but I do answer them eventually. So if you have any questions about that, then go ahead and ask. I don't mind. I will answer you. I'm not, like I said, this isn't a secret recording software. This isn't a secret thing. I don't tend to do that. I, I like to share. That's why I'll share OBS. And I'll share Encoder if you're interested. 
to see how that works. I could probably use OBS to, to record Encoder to show you how it works, but I'm not really sure if OBS will cooperate. It hasn't been very good to me recently. But, um, so there's that. Let's see. I think there's quite a bit more to this tutorial left. It's about 25... It's about a 30 minute, 34 minute tutorial. So, it is... It's very long. If I could speed up the process, I would, but I haven't figured out how to do that yet. I have not figured out how to do double time. Right now, we're doing the monkey's chest. And, like I said before, I use three main anchor points only because that's what works best for me. What works for me may not work for you. So just fiddle with it, test it, and figure out things on your own because everyone's different. Like I said before, everyone is different. Your style is different than my style, and that's just how it is. So we're going to go ahead and move on. For those of you who don't know, I do live in South Florida. It is getting into summer right now. It's just started summer. I know everyone says summer starts June 1st. No, not, not here. No. It starts when it gets hot, and that's exactly what it's been. It's, it's going to range anywhere between 85 to about 95 degrees during the day, and the humidity is going to be outrageous. It's going to be about anywhere from 80 to 97% humidity, which means it's going to be hot, muggy, wet, thick, humid air. And it is awful. I don't care what anyone says. It's awful here. But I still live here. I was born and raised here. So there's that. But um, we do get hurricanes. We do get rainstorms. I'm looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to some rainstorms. It would be really nice to have them. And now we're doing the collarbone. I always put a collarbone. I don't always put the, the lines for the throat that lead down to the collarbone. But I always put a collarbone. And after that we're going to go ahead and work on the chest line. Is it called a chest line or is it called a pectoral line? I'm not sure. It is a chest line for the monkey. And I believe after this I will go back and fix the vest because it doesn't flow quite right with the bottom portion of the vest that, that curves outward, which I haven't done yet. Spoiler. Spoiler! So now I'm going to work on the vest here. This is the back portion of the vest. Like I said, three main anchor points pretty much one in the middle to curve it out. That's typically what I do. Excuse me if you can hear that, I yawned. Whew. I'm so sorry about that. I've been very busy this morning. <laughs> Sunday morning. Um, I do hope to get this up. I really do hope that this helps some of you darlings. I really, really do because I'm like I said, the path tool has been a huge, huge help for me, and I hope it becomes a huge help for all of you. And I just hope it helps somebody in general. <laughs> Even if you're not one of my darlings and you're just some random person who comes across the video, please, I hope it helps you. And don't be afraid to share your work with me, please. I want to see it. Go to the selection, go back to the... Okay, it's just going to give me problems with the paintbrush again. But that's alright. Finishing his his rear area, his derriere, his butt area with the tail and his legs, and I should complete that. I'm probably not gonna put any fur down here, just because I didn't do it earlier, so I probably won't do it in later videos. But that's okay, because it doesn't always have to be furry. Um, the fur is to represent the parts of him that are furry, like his shoulders, his arms, whereas the rest can be fairly smoother, which is just my grasp of it. Like I said, this is this is just my interpretation of what the flying monkey would look like, whereas others have other ones. I mean, there's thousands of iterations of them on the internet, but this is just mine. And I forewent the hat for curly Q hair because I adore hair. I don't know why. Hair is one of my favorite things to color along with eyes. This is his thigh. We have another piece of thigh over there between the vest and the forearm. And 
that's his uh I didn't realize that my computer would go into sleep mode while I was trying to record this. Please come back! Oh, it's still playing. Oh, phew! Oh my goodness! That was... <laughs> That's not supposed to happen! I'm running audacity and it still went into sleep mode. Oh my goodness! Phew! Thank goodness. Okay, that was a little startling. Okay, now he's gone to selection. We're gonna go back to the paintbrush tool and we're gonna paint that area. And then after that, I'm probably gonna go ahead and fix that vest up top to make it a little more uh, to match the bottom flap that's curved. Oh my goodness, what is this? Oh, it's just a bunch of stuff. Sorry, so much noise going on back here. So so much noise. So um, yeah, like I said, I'm still learning about recording and and audio editing, video editing, and all that good stuff. You know, it's like I said, it's a learning process. It's it's what it is. It's, it's a big learning process. And so here I'm going to go ahead and I'm trying to fix the, uh, the vest. See, that's where I messed up. I didn't do selection first. I hit the zoom tool first and that's where it disappeared. But that's okay. We're going to zoom in and we're going to go back and we're going to fix it. Inside for first, then we'll go back and delete the old vest line. right now. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Except that, I don't know. So now I'm uh, waiting for it to come back to life. As you can see, it gives me problems quite often, but that's not the program's fault. It's not uh, screen capture fault, it's not GIMP's fault, that is my computer's fault. It's not a strong processor, but you know, it does what I want it to do, and it does it fairly well, so I'm actually quite impressed with it. Um, so now, once it comes back, we're going to go ahead and use the pen path tool to go to design, and we're going to fix that little space we deleted up top. I keep saying we, it's odd, we, it doesn't matter, they're interchangeable. So we're going to go ahead and... Uh, Come on, come back to life. <laughs> it's gonna take a while. But that's all right. It happens sometimes. Um. Oh, I don't really know what to say. Yeah, I'm not I'm not quite sure what to say here. 
accept it. I do hope you darlings, you know, use this. If you don't want to use it, you don't have to. But I do hope that you learn something from it. If you don't learn anything, that's fine too. This is there for those who want to learn, who want to learn how to use the path tool. And I, like I said before, I'm a novice at this, so I'm not perfect. I don't know everything, and I'm not going to say I know everything. I am a novice. This is just how I use the path tool. This is how I've learned how to use the path tool. You might have a different way to use it. I don't know. But if you do, share it. I would love to see how you use your path tool and on what artwork. There we go. It looks a little better. I'm, I'm happy with that. I like that. That's fine. Let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit. I'm going to take it off. There, look. He's looking nice. Look at those nice clean lines. Look at that. Look at that. That's beautiful. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in. We're going to go ahead and we're going to start working on his mouth, his nose, and the little lines for the inside of his ears. And the mouth is one of my favorite parts on this. I actually stuck to that quite seriously with the sketch because I really like that little, little, whatever it is I gave him sort of mouth. There we go. started with the curves and maybe one in the middle for editing and that's about it. Again, I'm really excited to color this. This is going to be really, really fun to color. For coloring, you can use a mouse or a the pen tool that comes with your tablet. Uh, I usually use the pen tool because it's just easier for me and I'll probably use it in the future so you don't have to hear any mouse clicks from me. And then to weed out again. Oh wait, I just hit my desk. My watch. Oh my gosh. It's okay, it's tough. It's a tough watch. There we go. There's a little nose. And a little mouth. There we go. That was nice. He's starting to look like a little monkey now. jealous when I'm on the computer. Alright, now we're going to the ears. Ears are done. I'm going to probably work on one of the outside of the wings. Yeah, I feel like I want to add that in there. I really want to probably just start with the basic outline of the wings by his head. One, two, three points, three anchors, one in the middle, there we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up to the one at the very top. We're going to pull another anchor out. And a 
another one so that it has a nice curved line. Now, it's a bit thick at the base, so we're going to move that down. That looks good. That looks good. Adjusting with the handles, as you can see, it adjusts the line on one side. It looks good. So we're going to go ahead and select that. Once it comes back to life, we'll go ahead and we'll paint that main line. Then the wings don't look like they'd be too hard. You can probably do copy and paste some of the lines to make the to make the feathers, the line of the feathers, which which I'll show you next time on how to make them really, really thin, because I, I really want them to be thin. I don't want to be thick like this. So I'll have to show that to you next time. And that's going to be really fun, because it's going to look like there's nothing there. When you paint it, it'll be there. Now we're going to do the second one. And as I said before, don't worry about it if you overlap your lines because you can always delete them later. Put it right just above his hair. Perfect. That looks good. It actually came out perfect. Go ahead and select it. We're going to paint it once it's ready. zoom into the tail, we're going to take out those extra lines that were there. And there we go. That's going to do it. That's it. That's all there is to it. So far, that's just the... Well, it's almost done. we got to finish off the wings and his hair, so I'll do that next time. Right, so thank you for watching. Thank you, Darius, for watching and stopping by. If you liked it, hit it up, comment, or suggestion, then put it in the box below. And if you want to see more videos like this, then subscribe to the channel. Alright? Bye-bye now.